Good morning. Welcome to the Coyote Valley Dam Egg Extraction Facility here at beautiful Lake Mendocino. I'm Supervisory Park Ranger Taylor Vaughn with the Army Corps of Engineers and I will be your tour guide. Today's virtual tour is focuses on the life cycle of the steelhead trout native to the Russian River watershed and the efforts by the Corps of Engineers, California Department of Fish and Wildlife, and local volunteers to preserve these spectacular fish. Are you ready to begin? Yes! Then follow me. We are now entering the egg extraction facility, commonly known in Ukiah as the fish facility. This facility was built to receive fish, like my buddy Sammy Steelhead here, who grew from a small egg to a feisty fingerling and then made the journey from Lake Mendocino to the Pacific Ocean and back again. But before we start talking about that journey or the life cycle, let's start with the basics. The steelhead trout is a relative of one of nature's most beautiful freshwater fish, the rainbow trout. The difference between them is that rainbow trout spend their entire lives in fresh water, places like streams, rivers, and lakes, while steelhead spend the first few years of life in fresh water and then journey down to salt water when they're ready to see the world. After a few years, the steelhead, like many humans, get homesick and return to their native waters to start a family of their own. Do you know the scientific term for fish that come from salt water to fresh water to spawn? They're called anadromous species. Let's talk about where these fish come from. These steelhead are native to the Russian River watershed stretching from Lake Mendocino to the coastal town of Jenner. The fish we will see today traveled more than 180 miles to the Pacific Ocean and back again to spawn and help their species stay alive. Once they return to the base of the dam from the Pacific Ocean, the steelhead follow the scent of food to the fish ladder. There, they jump a series of steps to a holding pool where we see Fish and Wildlife's Danny Garcia crowding the fish to be sorted. Danny is like a fish cowboy corralling the fish to a special gate that lets fish in, but none out. Next, we'll take a close look at a male and female steelhead and find out how to tell the difference. As we head to the spawning station, pay close attention to the mural on your left. It shows the steelhead's journey home, where they face both friends and predators along the way. Okay, so what I'm doing now is we're going to sort through the new fish that came in this morning. And this is a male. Thirty-one male. We're going to hold on to him for spawning. This separate holding tank is called the sleepy tank. We've pumped the water full of carbon dioxide to help the fish relax after a few minutes. So when the biologists and volunteers handle them, they won't hurt themselves or the people holding them. You can see the difference between this guy and the female. It's a slender build, coloring, hook to the mouth. This is a female, and we can tell that she's a female by her belly. See how big her belly is? And her characteristics, her face is, uh, doesn't have the hook to the jaw and the coloring also. Alrighty, so we are fully tagging these fish right below the dorsal fin. The fully tag right here is to help that we can track adults as they want to release after we spawn them. And what we're hoping is the color is our release site, but there's a four digit number on it. If anglers catch this fish, they can call it in. What that's going to do is help track this fish's migration after we released it. Okay, so now I'm going to just demonstrate to you what the difference is between a ripe female and a green female. On a green female, the skeins are usually, they start up here on top and it's, it's, a hard, it's harder. So you can definitely tell that she's green. Her stomach is not as big. This female is going into the green tank. Okay, so this is a ripe female. 
Her stomach is soft, not as hard as the green female. Um, the skeins are nice and loose. The eggs are loose inside. Stomach cavity, as you can see the eggs come out. Nice and easy. So this is a ripe female. What you are seeing now is a female steelhead having her eggs extracted. They put a small needle into her belly that is hooked to an air tank to help dispel the eggs and reduce the stress the fish is experiencing during spawning. These eggs are sticky so they can stick in place in the stream and become resilient like a bouncy ball so they can survive the river's rough waters. Next, we see the male steelhead having milt extracted. The biologist massages his belly to help the male fish release their milt, which will be poured over the eggs to fertilize them. The fertilized eggs then are dunked in iodine solution to minimize the risk of contamination. The saline solution is just going to help remove any ovarian fluid, any excess milk. Kind of clean the eggs out before we put them in an ovidine solution. The ovidine solution is going to help disinfect eggs. And those eggs are going to sit for about 30 minutes. And that 30 minutes is hopefully enough time to disinfect those eggs. And we have a set right here of disinfected eggs that we're going to go ahead and put in a five gallon bucket of water which is going to water harden the eggs so they're ready for transport. So what happens after the eggs have been extracted, fertilized, and dunked in iodine solution? A small portion of the eggs are donated to the Bill Townsend Conservation Hatchery run solely by volunteers from the Ukiah Valley Fish and Wildlife Club for their interpretive rainbow trout program. The fish raised here give visitors the chance to see the various life cycle phases of the trout and if they're lucky, catch one when they are relocated to nearby fishing holes for anglers of all ages to enjoy. The majority of the eggs are shipped to Lake Sonoma. So let's head down to Don Clausen Hatchery to talk with Ranger Emily about what happens down there. My name is Emily Cole and I am an Army Corps Park Ranger here at Lake Sonoma. Today we are at the Don Clawson Hatchery found at the base of the Warm Springs Dam looking behind the scenes at what happens once the fertilized eggs from Lake Mendocino are delivered here where they will grow for the next year. Over the next few minutes you will see four of the life cycle stages. Eggs, I eggs, Alvin and Fry. With me is Brian Friel who will tell us a little bit about each of the stages of the life cycle. Hello, my name is Brian Friel and I work for the California Department of Fish and Wildlife as a fish habitat assistant. I'm here to show you about the developmental stages of steelhead trout. Female steelhead trout in the wild lay their eggs in a red and they can lay as many as 5,000 eggs at a time. Each of the eggs has a small pore in it called the micropile. The micropile accepts sperm from the male, and as soon as sperm enters the egg, development begins. These eggs were just spawned today, and so you can see they're very orange in color, and the embryo is very difficult to see at this stage. It takes 28 days for eggs to hatch out, and before they hatch out, they develop a pigment spot which we call the eyed egg phase. You can see the pigment spot in each of these. This is a very uh, uh, subtle indication that the eggs are approaching time at which they will hatch out. The pigment spot is actually their eye spot pressed up against the membrane of the egg. As the, as the eggs continue to develop, you can see that the color begins to get darker red and the embryo is more prevalent within the egg. The eye spot becomes considerably darker. The embryo begins to burst through the egg. You can see the tail hanging out. And within time, they'll rupture. These eggs are, have about two days left to hatch. Once the eggs have hatched, you can see that they have a yolk sac attached to them. The yolk sac weighs the eggs down so that they can only swim in bursts. 
in the wild, they'd be in the interstitial spaces between the gravel where they'd be weighed down by their yolk sac. And over the course of two to three weeks, they'll absorb the yolk sac and get all their nutrients. And at this time, they won't eat any food at all. Once the egg sac is completely absorbed, the fish will swim up to the surface. At that point, we call them swim ups. At this stage, we call them alevins or sac fry because they show the yolk sac. Once they've swum up to the surface, they can accept feed. And the feed that we offer them at that stage is a granulated powder, very, very small, that they can uh, digest. And slowly they move up to a, a larger size feed. And then with time, we'll put them onto a pellet size feed. These are the nursery troughs that steelhead are reared in at the juvenile phase. Uh, you can see that these eggs here are right up. They're about to hatch and they're in what's called a hatch jar. We used to raise them in vertical incubators, but the hatch jar has a higher survival rate, allows for more percolation underneath the egg, and then the eggs can pour out volitionally into the nursery trough, where we'll rear them till they're about 300 to the pound. Up above them, there's automatic feeders. So once the fish have absorbed their yolk sac and become swim ups, we'll drop down the feeder and then put them on granulated feed. At 300 to the pound, they're roughly three inches long in length, and then we'll move them out to the raceways and rear them till they're yearlings. After a year here at Lake Sonoma, the yearling are ready to start imprinting and are shipped back to Lake Mendocino in a 1,200 gallon tank truck to spend their last month getting ready for the journey they were born to make to the Pacific Ocean. Back to you, Taylor. Thanks Emily and Brian. Welcome back to Lake Mendocino for the last portion of our tour, the raceways. Between January and March, you can find 200,000 fish completing a process called imprinting. Imprinting is what anadromous fish use to find home again when they are ready to spawn. They memorize the smell and the feel of the water and even use vibrations in the river to tell them where to go. Think of it like this. You come home from school and the first thing you're greeted with is the smell of your house. Some homes smell like candles or maybe cookies. Others can smell like pets or laundry, but you know your home because your house has its own special scent. Could you find your way home from San Francisco only using your nose? I know I can't even get to my best friend's house without GPS instructions, so I can't imagine using only the power of smell to travel hundreds of miles. Can you? The last thing we'll see today are the imprinting yearling behind me. Take a look as they have some lunch. Well, we have reached the end of today's tour. I hope you have enjoyed learning about the steelhead trout life cycle, their journey from home to the ocean and back again, and hearing a little bit about what the Corps of Engineers, California Fish and Wildlife, and the Ukiah Valley Fish and Wildlife Club are doing to help protect these magnificent fish. From all of us, we thank you for watching.